<clears throat> I finished East Book 1 and 2 this week. Hey. Finally. You finished that boss? You beat that boss? That boss was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up finding. I didn't even deciding. know how you were doing it because that boss like showed up through some like bubbles or <laughs> at you, and all of a sudden you were dead. Man, just take take it down a notch there, Johnston. <laughs> Working yeah. blue tonight. This guy really doesn't like his. Uh, his he bubbles. really doesn't like his. Yeah. No, no I like was purple uh, bubbles or something. Thumping and grinding my way through that, and yeah, like so. Last last week, I had gotten to the final boss of East Book Two, and mm-hmm. um, I was at the. I wasn't at the highest level. I was at the penultimate experience level. Oh. And it just wasn't good enough because um, mm. that final boss is sort of a bit of a damage race, basically. Um, and so I this week on the stream, I just decided, okay, you know, I'm, I'm relatively close to, uh, to going up to the final level. And, and there's a couple good uh, farming, experience farming areas in these book two. Uh, so I did that and then went in and beat it first try. Woo. So first try that night, not first try ever. Um, and yeah, so that's great because that's like I said before on the show, that's one of the games that uh, I've kind of I pined after for a long time when I was a kid because that was like the game where it's like, oh, man, I wish I had a TurboGrafx CD. You mm-hmm. know, not only did I not have a TurboGrafx CD, I didn't have a TurboGrafx. So um <laughs> Was excited to play through that. Although it's it's always kind of interesting, I find to play older RPGs, and I uh, you know my experience with older RPGs tends to be more like SquareSoft and Enix. Um, so you know, Neon Falcom, <coughs> I don't have a lot of experience with their games in general. But of course, you're talking about a time when like memory was at such a premium. I mean, I know these are CD games, but um, they they're this is a port of older an older game, a couple of older games anyway. Where, like, the worlds in both of them are so small. Oh, yeah. Like, so small. Um, And because of that, uh, like, the final area in Easebook 1 is Darm Tower, which is just this, I don't know, what, 30-level tower or something like that? That once you've (laughs) entered it, you can't leave, right? Like, it's... It's like okay, hmm. you're you're in you're in for the ride now, man. Like, make sure you're ready because there's no turning back. And... um, that was I mean, it wasn't unmanageable it was just it was a it was a grind for sure um but then man in East book 2 it ends in this area called i think Solomon Shrine which is just this gigantic maze that's not only that's not only multiple screens and and has all these switchback paths and everything like that but it's it also has like three different sewer levels underneath that you're hopping between and it has teleporters um, so, and, and it, they, they send you back and forth in there. I would say a good 50% of my time in East book two was spent navigating that maze. Hmm. Um, so it, it was, it was something else. I had a, a walkthrough that I'd printed out actually, because it, it I have a page right here because it had like, uh, illustrated maps. Um, no. and honestly, there's not a lot of information as far as walkthroughs for the turbo graphics East book one and two that I could find online. Oh, um, hmm. but I found this, uh, which is a PDF and I just, just, uh, yeah, just printed it out. Anyway, really glad I finally finished it. It's just one of those things that's been on my bucket list for 30 years. Um, <laughs> so it was nice to get it done and, uh, really did enjoy it. You know, once you'd sort of accept, you know, this is a real difficult game. Um, it want you, you, it wants you to grind because, it's built that way because, you know, it's like we want you to get as much time as possible out of this very small game. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, once you once you accept that, it's it's a whole lot of fun. So I'm really glad I finally played it. I'm really hey. glad I finally played through it. Very nice. How about that end credit music? <laughs> you know, one thing that I couldn't believe when it happened What's that? was when the credits roll, it was their real names. And this is like 1990. So you yeah. were still seeing uh, hmm. with Japanese games, you were normally seeing like pseudonyms, right? right. You, you weren't seeing actual full name. And there were a few, but for the most part, um, they were, yeah. Yeah. And the Sandman was hmm. one of the voices. So that's great. Yes, indeed. Um, and uh, I, I believe Thomas like the, Hayden Church. Yep. Thomas Hayden Church was one of the voices in the really? game. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Huh. And um uh, the narrator was, uh, I don't remember the guy's name. You probably know it, Phil, from Reboot and the the really uh, old. 
Sounds like he's he's like an old man, like a really deep voice. He wasn't the narrator, I guess. He was dark, dark factor. Tony J? Tony J. I'm pretty sure that was him. I want to say it was him anyway. It sounded like him anyway. That that game, the the English dub of that game, they they went all out uh, hiring like actual voice actors. Which is Mm. wild when you consider that it's from a time where, I mean, and for almost 10 years on from there, more often than not, your English voice actors were not actors no. oh yeah like you know so considering that well, that was sort of one of the first ones in other turbo games they were uh, and not Sega actors CD as well and then when you got into saturn <laughs> and playstation same thing right like you yeah. Got, uh, yeah so I alan think it was oppenheimer Tony it didn't sound it sounded like him anyway but you got alan, it was alan oppenheimer in there yeah uh that was, was the name i recognized maybe that's who i'm thinking of okay yeah he was skeletor in the okay. old he-man cartoon hmm uh, Jim Cummings, who's done a lot of stuff for like Disney, Michael Bell, mm-hmm. uh, Dan uh, Gilvezan. They were both, uh, they did a lot of voices on Transformers. Yeah. So they were actually hiring real voice actors. Yeah. Professional voice actors. So yeah, either way, man, it, it, I'm glad I've played it. I don't, I'm not going to dive into the, you know, into the series at this yeah. point, but, um, you know, I'll probably pay book three at some, or just East three, I guess at some point. But uh, yeah, really, really happy I played that. Hmm. Another.